I think that this partly explains the uh, the mindset on the so-called the political correctness. Most people shy away from saying or even thinking anything that is perceived to be politically incorrect. So the mechanics of political correctness that prevents the expression of dissenting opinions, notwithstanding the formal freedom of speech. It even stops the, the generation of incorrect thoughts, because most people feel the, the necessity to be to be at ease, at an inner ease with the, the mainstream of society. The, the prevailing scenes of political correctness, of course, change over time. But at any given time, they are deeply ingrained in the, to some degree, unconscious mindset of the political class and of the media. Reflecting on the reaction to my book, I identified 13 teams which constitute the main body of political correctness there in Germany, but maybe it's <laughs> this, uh, uh, this uh, the list is all uh, so fitting for Denmark, you might decide on yourself. <laughs> My book, uh, the violated every the single uh, of uh, this list uh, of uh, the political correctness, which I, dis which I discovered only afterwards. <laughs> Here is a list of political correctness in Germany. I think the list describes the truth, but it takes some humor or uh, irony to understand it, it fully. And it is uh, uh, one sign of political the correctness that is if it is the completely void of humor or of irony. <laughs> the, uh, the problem lies not in any single item of the list, but it lies in their the combination, in, in, in their uh, the rigid application to political thinking. And here comes the list. In, first, inequality is bad. Equality is good. Second, secondary virtues like industriousness, the precision or the punctuality are of no particular value. Competition is morally the questionable except in sports because it promotes inequality, the point first on the list, uh, point one on the list. Third, the rich should feel guilty. Exception, rich people who have earned their money as athletes or as pop stars may enjoy their wealth. <laughs> Fourth, different conditions of life have nothing to do with, to do with people's the choices, but only with the, the circumstances they are in. Fifth, all cultures are of equal rank and value especially the, the values and the way of life of the Christian Occident and of the Western industrialized uh, the nations should not enjoy any the preference. Those who think differently are, of course, the provincial and xenophobic. <laughs> Six, Islam is a religion of <laughs> Those who see any problems with immigration from Islamic countries are guilty of Islamophobia. This is nearly as bad as anti-Semitism. Seventh, Western industrialized uh, nations carry the main responsibility for poverty and the backwardness in other parts of the world. Eighth, Men and women have no the natural differences except for the, the physical signs of their sex. Ninth, uh, not the human abilities depend mainly on uh, training and education. The differences which are inherited play hardly any role. Tenth, there is no 
difference between peoples and races except for the physical appearance. Eleventh, the nation state is an outdated model. National identities and, and peculiarities have no particular value. The, the national element is as such is rather bad. It is, it, it, it is at any rate not worth preserving. The future belongs to the, the world society. Twelve, all people in the world do not have only equal rights. They are in fact equal. They should at least all be eligible for the benefits of the German welfare state. <laughs> Eleventh, children are an entirely private affair. Immigration takes care of the labor market and of any other demographic problem. So far this list. In this condensed form it may sound like a, a joke. But it is not a joke. If you read the papers, you see it's, it, it's obviously in nearly everybody's head who is writing there. Those, these are the hidden axioms of the, the, of the prevailing political mindset in Germany as well as in many other uh, industrialized countries as I see them. Every item on this list has a high emotional value for those who believe in it. The core of the problem is partly moral and uh, partly ideological attitudes are taken at face value and are mixed up with reality. It is a permanent task, I'm afraid, to sort that out. It makes me faintly optimistic, though, that after all that uh, the turmoil, I am still morally alive and not as a person and author ignominiously buried and forgotten. That had uh, that certainly been the intention of the vast majority of the political and of the media class, but for once the, uh, the general public disagreed. This in, in itself is of course a matter of dissatisfaction, not only for me, but for many people in, in Germany. Quite interesting was the experience with my the second book, Nach der Europa braucht den Euro nicht, which was published in May 2012. In this case, the nobody could deny that I am an expert on the matters I wrote about. <laughs> so they doubted again my motives and tried to discover right-wing or the populist elements in the book. That proved impossible. The historical reasoning was sound, the economic reasoning that I applied was the mainstream and adhered to strict logic. My warnings and misgimmicks were, were uh, the proven true, and they are uh, this time and again uh, nearly daily by the actual uh, events. <laughs>